Shlomo Melech writes, there's nothing new under the sun. Meaning, as wicked as our generation is, it's nothing new. There have always been wicked people, and there have always been righteous people. In order for the world to continue standing, it has to have 36 tzaddikim. 36 people that are righteous beyond their understanding that exist in every generation. So long as they exist, the world has enough merit to exist. If they don't exist, our world would not exist. Now, as far as the rest of the people, there have always been righteous, there have always been wicked. In a generation of a couple of thousand years ago, a little more than 2,000 years ago, almost 2,500 years ago, the generation of the Beta Migdash, the generation of Isaiah the prophet. Now, that generation, if you rationalize it without knowing the information, you would say, this must be the most righteous generation in the world. Why? They have all the reasons to be righteous. They have a Bet Mikdash, the first Bet Mikdash. It's not only a thing of beauty, it's a building that's literally an open miracle 24 hours a day. Every time they brought a Korban, somebody made a sin by accident. They turn on a light on show by accident, not on purpose. If it's on purpose, they kill him. But if it's an accident, they have to bring a cow. They have to bring some Korban to the Bet Mikdash because it's an accident. The Korbanot, by the way, only for accidental sins, not for a purpose. If it's on purpose, it's death penalty. Now, accidentally, he violated Shabbat. He was so righteous that he admitted he made an accident. Nobody saw it. Hashem saw it. But nobody else saw it. He admitted it. He went all the way from wherever he was in the country, stopped his business, closed down shop for a couple of weeks to go trek all the way to Yerushalayim with his cow to go bring this $25,000 cow for what? For accidentally turn on the light. That's how righteous he was. Amazing, right? Now he arrived at the Mikdash. Kohanim says, Oh, Baruch Haba. They start singing. He starts crying. Because why? He's crying. He's doing Shuvah. Now, something amazing happens. After they take the blood, because most of the Korbanot, unlike what we think, Gemara Masechet Yoma explains it. Also, Masechet Zvachim explains it. We think that they put the cow on the, uh, on the altar, and that's it, and it's done. That's wrong. In reality, only a small part of the cow goes in. Only a few innards go in. The rest of it is eaten by the Kwanim. The main part of the Koban is the blood. They take the blood and put it on the altar. That's the main part. As far as the meat, it's, most of it is eaten. We thought that they just, I, my whole life, I thought they take the cow, put it, slaughter it, put it on the altar, and then it goes to Shemaim or something. That's what I thought. That's not how it works. Most of the Koban is blood. They take the blood, spread it in specific places, and so on and so forth. Depends what type of korban it is, whether it's uh, uh, inside uh, the, the Kodesh Kodeshim, or outside the Kodesh, and so on and so forth. Now, what happens at this point? After you put the whole thing, a fire in the image of a lion comes from heaven, enormous, enormous, monstrous, huge, beautiful lion comes from heaven and takes the korban. For everybody to see. Imagine, you're right there. A lion comes from heaven. If the guy was crying before for a sin he made by accident, by now he's hysterical. Why? He just saw a lion from heaven. And everybody else is crying too. Why? Oh, hopefully that lion doesn't eat me. And guess what? Every day. Every day, all day. All day you see miracles. All day. The Kohen puts a little incense. The incense makes a pillar from where the Beta Mikdash is all the way to heaven, straight line. Even as if there's a hurricane, even if there's an earthquake, even if there's a wind, if there's rain, doesn't make a difference. The pillar of smoke goes all the way from Beta Mikdash like a beam all the way to outer space. Smoke. Nothing can stop it. I mean, it's open miracles. No woman had a miscarriage. No woman had a miscarriage. Not a single fly ever entered Bet HaMikdash, even though there's a bunch of meat. Go to a butcher shop. Five minutes, you'll see 50,000 flies. Go to a butcher shop, see how many flies are there. Why? That's, that's the nature. That's nature. It's not that it smells. not that it's not uh, uh, fresh. It's just nature. You have blood. You have uh, all types of stuff. There's, there's flies. Your garbage can has flies. Even if you clean your garbage can, it's still going to have flies. You go to a butcher shop, it's going to have flies. Bet HaMikdash, no flies. Countless miracles happen in the Beit HaMikdash. So you would think 
everybody not only should be righteous, everybody should be so righteous, it should be a generation of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, everybody's Moshe Rabbeinu, that's what you should think. Everybody should be called Moshe. Why? That's how right. You, have, you see a lion, you see all these things. What does Isaiah say? Isaiah says, you women, you wicked, you reshaim, you wicked women that are walking around with high heels and bells and wigs on your head. You'll see what a Kadosh Baruch Hu does to you when eventually the things that you're trying to motivate the others, that's how he's going to punish you. And the women answer, well, what do you want from us? What? You're making the Goim look at you? The women say to him, what's the worst that's going to happen? The Goim are going to want to marry us? So let them marry us. These are Jewish girls. Bet Yaakov. Chachamim asks, who are these wicked women? Look at the time of Bet HaMikdash. Who are these wicked women? What is this? Amalek? Who is this? He says, these were the rabbi's wives in that generation. Bet HaMikdash, Kodesh Kodeshim, Kohen Gadol, meaning nothing new under the sun. Women that wanted to be wicked were wicked. Women that wanted to be righteous were righteous. Eventually, everybody got what they deserve, reward or punishment. Nothing new under the sun. This is to teach us that as far as the generation that you're in, you're in it because of you, not because of anybody else. And you could be Moshe Rabbeinu in this generation. That's what the Rambam writes in Alakha, the Chot Shuvah. He specifically says every single person can be righteous like Moshe Rabbeinu. He doesn't say just in a generation of Moshe Rabbeinu, just in a generation of Bet HaMikdash, just in a generation of... No, no, every generation. You can be righteous like Moshe Rabbeinu. How? Learn Torah. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat